What were my three most useful gear items? That's a good question. Let's talk about it. Hey, hey, YouTube. Welcome back to Irvin Outdoors. Hey, I'm Irvin, but you knew that, didn't you? Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about the three most useful gear items from my recent trip to the Smoky Mountains. Now this trip was a uh, kind of a luxury camping trip. We actually stayed in cabins with a kitchen and running water and all of that. But uh, we did a lot of hiking, day hikes, you know, just short little hikes. Three miles one time, two miles one time. One of the trails that we took... Uh, to High Bethel, the, the view is spectacular. You can check out that video. I'll put a card up here. But uh, that was a very strenuous hike. But some of the gear that I took on this trip this weekend, I didn't even touch. I wanted to share with you what was the most useful three pieces of gear on this trip that I just took. And the first was my water bottle. And it could be any water bottle. This one just happens to be one of those Ozark Trail. It's got the wide mouth. It's got a nice flexible rubber handle here that you can fold down. And I just put a carabiner on there. Um, in case I wanted to hook it to a pack on the outside. But uh, this ended up fitting inside of my haversack just perfect. Yeah, so I made a little... A little Arabian outdoor sticker on there. But yeah, this came in very handy. Of course, you know, you always want to have water. I, I put Gatorade in mine. Phone went off, sorry. Probably my most used piece of gear this weekend. Second was my haversack. And uh, I'm going to go over to the table now and uh, show you up close for my haversack. And not what's in it, but the haversack itself. But yeah, this is my haversack. And uh, you can see, I mean, it's, it's, it's been through the ringer. I've had it for probably about 10 to 12 years, maybe. It used to be very waxed. And it still is, but it's not as stiff. It's very soft and pliable now. But it's just a basic haversack you know you've got the shoulder strap it opens up you've got a pocket on one side and then you have the big pocket on the other side nice and deep and I've already taken everything out uh, this first aid kit stays in there all the time as does this uh, bandana and one of my uber leading fire starters yeah, just your basic haversack, but this thing is perfect for a day hike. On there, I've got my family crest, and it says Virtue Mine Honor. It is just a, it was a great piece of kit. I took it on both of the hikes we went on, and then also when I went fishing, I was able to put my little tackle box in there. Um with my water bottle and my camera, first aid kit, bandana, fire starter, all that stuff. So just a very good, now I don't know who made this, I'll be honest with you. And like I say, I've had it for probably 10 to 12 years. It has held up um, better than I could ever expect. The stitching, there's not a, there's not a single stitch out of place. You know, it's scuffed up and beat up a little bit, but uh, I like that it's very soft now and pliable. But anyway, uh, yeah, virtue mine honor. That is my uh, family crest on my mother's side. I'm going to go back over into the shade now, guys. Come along with me. But that uh, family crest is for the McLean clan. That's my mother's side of the family. And, uh, interesting story, I don't know what the relationship would be, but my mother was, is from the, uh, 
the McLean clan, the McLeans of Dewart, on the Isle of Mole in Scotland. Sean Connery's mother was also a McLean of Dewart on the Isle of Mole in Scotland. So, I guess in some distant way, Sean Connery and I are related. Can you see the resemblance? Uh, just a little fact I thought I would share with you. It's a true fact. All right, so gear item number three that was the most useful. While I really only used it twice, that was uh, one on each hike that we did, I would say this is the one piece of gear that was an absolute lifesaver for me. And that is my trekking pole. Nothing fancy. I did have a more expensive trekking pole that I bought. And you see the connecting thing here. These are the little flip things that you flip and uh, open them up. The expensive uh, trekking pole that I had had the twisting kind. I, I'm sure you've seen those. But what happened over a couple of years, the little twisting things stopped twisting. One of them on the top, I couldn't twist anymore. So I couldn't raise or lower it. And the one on the bottom wouldn't tighten anymore, so it wouldn't stay one length. If I pushed on it, it would fold in. So I had to throw it away. But these, these little locking ones like that, now you see how easy it slides. Up and down, and then you just flip this little thing. It's a little, little tricky to flip, but it flips and snaps. And then, I've, you know, just got the carbide carbide tip and boy it went through some rocks and it's still there but that, like I say that trail that we went on was very steep very technical very rocky stumpy mossy if I didn't have this trekking pole it would have been a lot longer trip and a lot more miserable and I might have gotten hurt because this thing actually did save me from tripping and stumbling on numerous occasions and like I say this is just a cheap one but it was put to the test this weekend uh, it's made by outdoor products I believe that's the Walmart brand but if I ever do invest more money into a, a nicer uh, trekking pole it'll be this locking kind as opposed to the twist lock but anyway yeah my water bottle, my haversack, and my trekking pole were the three most used gear items on this last trip that I took. Anyway, what a beautiful day it is out here today. I think I'm going to get my longbow out and shoot it a little bit. If I had my tripod, I would do some footage of it. Maybe this weekend after I get my tripod back on game night. But anyway, hey, thanks for coming along on the Urban Outdoors, guys. I appreciate your support. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave some comments. And until next time, keep calm, carry on, and keep it outdoors.